What's up, everybody? Big episode. You're already probably skipping past this because it's Mal from The Ultimatum. Biggest queer sweetheart in the world, I think, right now. And oh my God, what a sweetheart. I absolutely adored having her on. But before we get into that, we got a WHGS live show coming up on Wednesday, July 18th. It's live at the Bell House, but also online for you to stream and watch up to one week later. We got games. We got audience interaction. We have special guests. It's a lot of fun. It's not a regular podcast episode. Um, I hope you can come and watch it live. Go to ashleygavin.com to go and watch. And then today... We get into like a really deep conversation with Mal. It's super, super funny. But we also get into some stuff about like her life beyond the show. I She is, sometimes you meet someone and you're like, oh man, this is such a special person. That's Mal. Mal is as special as you think she is from the show. More special. I had a ton of fun with her and I, and I hope she'll be back. Um, and yeah, patreon.com slash WHGS. You can donate as little as a dollar. Um, we can't do this on ads alone. We have a, a nice big team now working on this to make this content for you and me. Um, and then I'm, I'm running my solo show throughout the summer and I'll be back on tour in August and September. AshleyGavin.com to sign up to get a text for your area. Okay. Have a good week, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys for coming. Give it up for yourselves. It's a very live, very chaotic show, and it's very interactive. Are you guys ready to commence the straight booing? We are doing a live variety show version of We're Having Gay Sex. We're also live streaming it on Filter. I think it would be fun to give Ashley a femme makeover on stage. What? A gay virgin. We are going to take a look at their hinge profile. Oh shit, you can see her nipple. This is the coolest day of eighth grade ever! <laughs> oh my god! Get Jonathan B in here, dude! <laughs> <laughs> It's not a normal episode of the podcast. We're playing games. We're doing stand-up. We're going to bring you up on stage. Some live uncut action. Tell me that this isn't just the absolute portrait of Hey Mama's Lesbian. Yes! Ask her, you went to girl camp. Did you prefer the top bunk or the bottom? Uh, We're doing the mask dater. Maddie's going to pick two femmes and a mask from the audience. I'm what you would call an enigma. Enigma? What, are you not into that word or something? No, no, no. I d- okay. <laughs> I'm hoping you're a mean femme. That's kind of what I'm into. Come on, come on! The biggest queer arm wrestling event in history! Three, two, one! We're wrestle. having gay sex live. We're coming up on Wednesday, July 18th. Head on over to ashleygavin.com or we're having gay sex.com and get tickets. Listener, this episode is brought to you by the Hello Tushy Bidet. The Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. I love my Hello Tushy Bidet because it just leaves me feeling a little more confident about my cleanliness, if you know what I mean. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in a few months. Every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash WHGS and use promo code WHGS to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. One more time, that's hellotushy.com slash WHGS for 10% off. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Babbel. This summer, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying for an expensive tuner or fooling yourself into these little language apps that are just games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. I've been using it to get ready for my upcoming vacation to learn the little phrases that I need to know for conversation, and it is amazing. I can't believe how much progress I've made in just three weeks. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash WHGS. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash WHGS. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash WHGS. Rules and restrictions may apply. This has been here the whole time. It's been, you want it? Yes. <laughs> Please. Are you a kidding list. me? <laughs> 
you at the reunion, you'll be talking about Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa mouthing fuck off to Xander. <laughs> Um, um, Vanessa barely penetrating Ray. <laughs> Wait, I didn't mean that way. <laughs> All right. We've learned, we've learned one thing thus far in this podcast. <laughs> Mike Jones is black. Mike Jones, is, we've learned two things. Mike Jones is black. Some of us already knew that. Some of us assumed... I'm kidding around. <laughs> and some of us, <laughs> uh, and uh, Mike Jones is uh, not canceled. Yes, he's As not. far as we know, based on a quick Google search. Correct. I, I gotta be honest, based on the font of the hat, I assumed he was like a personal injury law lawyer That's or why something. I did it. 100% That's why I did it. ambulance chaser. <laughs> I'm this hat. Cause I, he's well, just you such made a, you the hat. hat. Yeah, I got That's the hat. That's awesome. Yeah. So it looks like like some vintage thing That's that why you I did thrifted. It. Yeah. That's so sick. Thanks friends. Thank um, We're going, right? Yes. Cause this is some, the lesbians need Mike Jones content. <laughs> They've this been perfect. asking for it. They were like, please have Mal on the podcast, but only if she's talking, if she's about, talking about Mike Jones. Who? He says that. He says Mike Jones. And then, and then we says, all who? go, Mike Jones. Who? Am I correct? Not really. Okay. <laughs> I'll I mean, teach you guys never, another time. We can do a Google. Uh, we can put it. I can put it on right now. Um, but thanks for being here. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with probably... The most famous queer person on planet Earth at this moment. They're, fame is a weird thing. Okay, so weird. It only it really it only lasts. It's like a fruit. We it's the it's the analogy from comedy. It, yeah, you are the ripest fruit of fame right now. You are at your peak. You are a a stone. Well, don't say that. Fruit. Maybe it still goes up from here. Maybe, we don't know. Maybe, but right now, <laughs> but right now, that was super weird. Our guest is in her prime and will never feel this way again. No, but I, what I mean is like you're having a moment. You have numerous moments to come, I'm sure. But right now, yeah, you are having a moment from the ultimatum. Mal Wright. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, you are. Fame, I'm doing. Yeah. Fame is so weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah. It's it's, it's weird. Yeah. I was prom queen, so it's like, <laughs> I don't, it's like, it's not that weird. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a very small school. But it is sort yeah. of like that in that prom, prom queen, were you like very popular? In my very small town, yes, where I went to high school. Very, were you, very small. Were you like femme at the time? I was more feminine, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't femme. I was like a tomboy, like Sierra. Remember when Sierra was like mm -hmm, a tomboy? Mm -hmm. We weren't. We wasn't. We weren't sure if she was gay or not. Nobody knew. We wanted her to be. Yeah, that's was like that. I mean, isn't that for everybody in in the music yeah, industry? Yeah, I, I, I was a tomboy for a minute too, and then oh, I was like, I was talking oh. about wanting people to be gay. Oh, but you do your tomboy. Oh, yeah. You do your tomboy thing. Oh, no, 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 just that, like, fully, I was like, yeah, I'm, like, a guy's girl. And I was like, no, I, like, might be a guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I might just be a man. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. dropping I'm, a girl. I'm actually a guy's guy. I'm actually a guy. <laughs> Full stop. Yeah, now I'm like, I think I'm kind of a girl's guy. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm having a very femme day today, but generally, yeah. Maddie, no caveats. Okay. I'm a girl's guy for sure. The older I get, the more I'm like, yeah, I'm a girl's guy, I think. Mm. I just look, it's just more comfortable to dress this way. Is gender mm. a thing for you? Because we, we don't really know do on mean? the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they, gender is not totally addressed. There's like a two second interaction with Aussie where like Aussie's like, yeah, I'm trans. And then, and then Mildred is like, that's wonderful. That's it. That's like all we <laughs> get all about we get. gender in the entire series. Yeah. Other than America learned what femme for femme was. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, we try, I try to have a teachable moment to teach people what like, mask for mask was because that's like a thing that happens yes of course but we didn't get our moment xander and i we didn't get our moment did you talk about it on camera and it yeah. was just like didn't make it yeah we went I, on dates okay we went on full dates wow that, that would have been what did that feel like my favorite you? couple of the whole show <laughs> it felt very weird for me because i am not a girl who typically dates mask not even i just no don't way. date mask yeah i know <laughs> flash everybody um but it was cool for what it was. You know, you have seven people you can pick from. You pick the best suited person. And I was like, let's do this mask on mask thing. Yeah. Xander, let's do it. And we were like trying to figure it out. We we're like, uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> and then her voice is playfully like this. who playfully touches Weird. who on the arm. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's if a girl playfully touches me on the arm, like I'm I'm hers for eternity. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. We had this she like one chuckles moment. and touches you on the arm. It was like a we were at like a fire pit, and then you know they were like gonna feed me like a marshmallow, and I was like I I just can't. Get, this is so <laughs> odd. I would say <laughs> even if I were at a fire pit with Emily Ratajkowski, if she tried to feed me a marshmallow, actually, maybe I'm, t- maybe I might take this back. <laughs> I would say feeding a marshmallow can be kind of a cringy experience, even if you're attracted to the person. Yeah, it was weird. We tried to <laughs> lean in though. We did our best. It was super weird. Was it kind of feeling like she was like, is it she or they with Xander? Do we know? She and they. Okay. Yeah. Was she sort of like, if maybe if I feed you this marshmallow, something might happen between us. Did it feel like that? Did it feel inorganic in that way? It felt inorganic. We were like, I don't know. Even our body language was weird. We we're both like, <laughs> yeah. like who's on top? All like, elbows. Yeah. Going into the, into the marshmallow yeah. feed. And I'm like, oh, let me lean in. I don't know where to be. It was weird. <laughs> it was super weird, That's but like, like a- cute. A weird thing when you try to be dominant with someone who's like also yeah. dominant where you're like, like I've had this with like, I come by and I've had this with guys where I'm like, I try to be like, oh, do you like that? And then he's like, do you like that? And I'm like, now we're fighting. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> now we are wrestling is, for dominance. This is an argument. Yeah. This <laughs> is a sexual argument. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's what it was like. We're settling this in the octagon. I have to- <laughs> <laughs> and by the octagon, I mean the rectangle and that is my bed. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, I have to ask you two questions. Okay. First of all, can I go shopping with you sometime? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cause and I'm you have a fantastic to- shirt. Thank you. I want you to know I saw it and I was like, yes. Thank you. I this the is right thing. kind of the shirt that I all week have been like, I have to save it for when Mal comes on the podcast. It's perfect. You Thank did you so, so much. Did you do that for me? I did it for you. Mask on this mask. This is mask for mask. This is my marshmallow into your mouth. This is my shirt mellow yeah. onto my body for you. And look at me just calm and ready to accept it. Thank you so much. And your pants, Carhartt. Thank you. You're- such a dyke. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying really, really hard right now to up my style a little bit. It's not something I'm like super comfortable doing. Shopping can be hard for me. Pants, especially, are a struggle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you feel it. You dress more masculinely. I'm sure you're in the men's section of a fair amount. Uh huh. And the pants are are hard. It's weird. Yeah. So I'm hoping that you'll take me shopping. I will. Maybe we can make a YouTube video or something. Yes. Okay. And it's then easy. we don't, yeah. it doesn't have to be for content. It can just be for friendship. Uh, but for me, they are the same. <laughs> I want us to be me friends. Me and Maddie have become, become such friends close friends through publicly. the content that we've created. <laughs> We're already friends. I know, I know. That's honestly, one of my favorite thing about podcasting is meeting interesting people that I have no other excuse to meet. And then I get them to come in here and make this content. I'm like, oh, it's like very, like, it's a big podcast. Yeah. But then, then they become my friend. Yeah. And that's like a <laughs> lovely experience. You were already my friend. Creepily, I watched you on the internet. Specifically with the black girl in, in the crowd. That's oh, when I was Shanti. like, oh, you got me. I'm glad it was that clip. I love that clip. It's so funny. Thank you. And then I go, uh, periodically I go back to the comments just to check if people are still wondering what Ashanti does. Yes, <laughs> yes. And they still they still check like what she does and people defend Go her and all these things. Go to my fucking YouTube channel, you piece of shit. Yeah. The whole clip, yeah. is, there's a whole clip on there. Yeah. Um. But the other thing I wanted to ask you, this is more about you. Okay. And this is the question that America, this is the one question I knew I was going to ask you. <sighs> I'm not a lesbian. I'm are you- <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of your husband? Mike Jones. Ash- <laughs> Ashley. Oh. Gavin. <laughs> no, I was going to ask you, are you absolutely swimming in it right now? Swimming in what? You know you know what, Mal? Are you swimming Are you swimming in pussy? No. Are you absolutely drowning? No. Dr- drowning no. in pussy? No. No. How many barrels of pussy would you say <laughs> have entered your place of residence? Uh. Is this too, <laughs> do you hate this question? I don't hate it. Um, no, I'm actually not drowning in it because I'm just like treading water and I'm like, oh, I don't really know. Mm, You're no. floating on pussy. I'm treading float- water with two fingers like Floating's, this. Yes. <laughs> Floating's better. Yes. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. It's so Good. much fun. The comment section in like some of my TikToks and whatnot is completely unhinged. It's I see the craziest the comments. The thirst. People are like, I'll leave my husband and 
children for you. And I'm like, I would never ask such a thing. And that's actually scary. I would never ask for that. I just, I just want to drown in, in your pussy. That's all. <laughs> I'm, I just want to float. I just want to tread a little water. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? No, I don't think so at all. No. I think America is in love with you. And I think that's like such a fun, I've never interviewed someone that like America is like actively in love with. How so are you seeing anyone now? Oh, jumping right into it. I don't know. Yes, I am. That's why you're not swimming in it. No, I, who said it was like a hard launch or okay, like, a, okay, okay. you know, maybe I'm just taking my time. So keep sliding into the DMs. <laughs> I almost like, again, I like almost don't even want to do my gay sex story. Do it. Because, okay. Well, we I'll, can skip mine and kind of go for more interview. I think that could be fun. It could be fun. Yeah. I'll just mention what happened to me today. Cause like, that's what I was going to mention. Did on you the have podcast. sex today? No, I didn't have sex oh. today. Um, I had sex yesterday. Was it great? It was great. Did yeah. you wash your hands? I did wash my hands. Good. I actually have washed my hands multiple times between, thank you for asking, yeah. between, I did not wash the microphone. Oh, I've crap. actually <laughs> had sex multiple times. Do we use this? Between, yeah. Can the okay. viewers hear this at home? <laughs> 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 oh my God, wait. Have you guys seen these TikTok videos? These are repugnant of this guy who calls himself the donut daddy. No. Have you seen Donut Daddy? No, I'm going to look him up. Don't. It will ruin your fucking life. Okay, because the first place my head's going is I'm like, does he fuck the donuts? Oh, I didn't of, think about that. He kind of does fuck the donuts. It's derivative of this bread girl. <laughs> so the anthropology of the internet is just is just harrowing. His predecessor, bread girl. Sorry. <laughs> this, this woman takes bread, throws it down on her counter, and like BDSMs the bread. She like spanks the bread. She like kneads the bread. She like really gets into this bread. She like pop, 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 pop on the bread. Does the bread have any like recoil? Like it does. Back? It does. And oh, that's, well, I have seen people slap a like bread pile of dough back. and been like, that's a fat ass dude. You know what I mean? Like sometimes <laughs> the bread. Yeah. Sometimes the bread like bounces a little bit. Yeah. You're like no, okay. the bread bounces. So that's what this guy does with donuts. But he takes it to this whole other level where like it's very quick shots it's almost asmr -y. It has like very sensual music. And you're also hearing like, you're hearing a lot of the process that goes in. You're hearing an egg crack, but you're also hearing like the splatter of like glaze, like hitting the like table. It's like very like wet and like cum and like spanking the bread and like sticking I'm his finger through it. it up. <laughs> I'm absolutely gonna look up Donut Man. I'm like, what is this doing to our brains now where we're like, I can't come unless I'm covered in sprinkles. Like, it's gonna rewire us in a way that's like, no, not good. It's truly abhorrent and a sign of the decline of the human species and sure. we're, we're all gonna Fast. die. Yeah. But what I was gonna say, um, what, th thank you, um, was I am in the process, this is actually sort of related to your arc on um, the ultimatum. The I'm donut getting, man? No, not the donut oh. man. Thank God. Wouldn't it be like, great? What? The donut man. You know Make the donut man sense. that me Yoli it. was also in love with? Right. Um, donut guy. I, I, uh, the non queer host of the show, donut the, guy. The, the non <laughs> queer host of the show. He's just, he's like, I don't even know what's happening with these ladies. And he's <laughs> yeah. fucking a donut. Um, I am getting my ex frozen. I started. Sorry, I thought you said getting my ex frozen. <laughs> I was I, like, I'm oh getting my, my ex frozen. I'm through the process. I'm, I'm just in case anything happens to Jen, my <laughs> girlfriend, I'm yeah. in an open relationship. Just in case anything happens to Jen, I'm going to cryogenically freeze my ex girlfriend. <laughs> um, just Sounds in like case. Black Mirror, like a episode. Oh my God, that would be a good right? Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Don't they have, they have something similar? I don't know. I don't watch Black Mirror. I just know up the, the episode themes. What type of lesbian doesn't watch Black Mirror? A bad one, I guess. Fuck. Don't tell people. I watch. I don't watch Black Mirror. I do watch Donut Daddy. I'm a bad <laughs> lesbian. Oh my god! Well, I, am I a finally bad have one queer point over you. I love Black Mirror, and I've never heard of Donut Daddy. <laughs> I'm just realizing that everything I consume is straight in this moment. Like I, I sort of knew that before. I think that's a. Are, do you consider yourself mask like masculine? What would you say, Mal? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. I think we consume straight things. I think there's something going on. I don't know. Stick with me on it. I know this is great. People consume straight stuff Go and on. we identify with the guys. A lot of the time. Yeah. I, I feel such a mix because I don't have like a lot of gender dysphoria. And actually one of the things with egg freezing is like, this is like how I feel peak connected to being a woman. Like nice. my urge 
I cannot tell you how nervous I did this. Like, wait, sorry. It's just, it's a very funny mask thing to do. Be like, get pregnant, but make it science and technology. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> but bring in some machinery yeah, and yeah, doctors. Yeah. Oh, what are you, what are you sticking me up there with? Is that, uh, the QR 74? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I love the, I love the QR 74. Yeah. Yeah. Get in. I'm more of a 92 guy, but I understand why you're going with the 74. Yeah. Get to get it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're sitting like this under a table and a guy like a car mechanic sliding under a skateboard yes, on yes, his back yes. and like tweaking yeah. around yeah how's <laughs> it looking under the hood right the literal hood check my hood check, check the hood <laughs> i think you're so right though i i think do you think it's possible not just because we relate to the men but because we can self-actualize with the men a little bit whereas femmes Maybe because they've been perceived. Well, you've been perceived as straight. Oh, well, is that even true? I, I've gotten a lot of both. I'm like gender fluid. So some days I'm dressed like this and some days I'm dressed very masculine. We did like, not introduce ourselves. To oh, the shoot. Oh, I'm actually, yeah, if you're here just to see Mal's beautiful, beautiful face, perfect cheekbones, excellent teeth. I'm Ashley Gavin, I'm a comedian and Mal likes me. So fucking stick around and watch the episode with Ray and then get into it, okay? And I go on tour, ashleygavin.com. I'll text you when I'm in your city. And then as all, oh, I'm a cis gay white lesbian. And as <laughs> always, the hall monitor to keep me from, from getting canceled, Maddie Wiener. Hello, I'm Maddie Wiener. I'm also a comic, uh, she, they pronouns. I'm gender fluid, I'm bi. Uh, and I'm also going on the road soon. So check out my stand up. It's all in my Instagram and Maddie's bio. podcast. Yeah. And I have a podcast called, and how's that working for you? It's a comedy podcast with my friend. So it's a full half hour to get here, but do you <laughs> mind introducing yourself? Everyone's here for you. So. You all did so well. I'm Mal, right. And I was on the ultimatum queer love. Mm, only black person on cast. So you didn't miss me. Um, <laughs> that's all I got. I'm not going on tour and I'm not a comedian. Wait, what is your dream Mal? My dream? Yeah. <sighs> Probably maybe host something, maybe be like Ellen, but black. I would love for you to be black, <laughs> Ellen. Yeah. But Mal, you know, we could ask, what was your career before the show? And has, are you still in that? No, I was in corporate America. I was in leadership um, and I was in a like HR project yes, management program. That's exactly what I would. Yeah. It's kind of wild. So, yeah. Do you, so you uh, white people mess up and then you come in to like have to fix it. Precisely that. Yeah. yeah. And or I'm the face of things. Yes. And they're like, yes. You're you on know. a poster. You're on a brochure. One thousand percent. You're perfect to put on a brochure. Mm. You're a twofer. Thanks. A visible <laughs> twofer. Look both. Look well, how many Let's bases. Let's get Mal to do it. Let's get well, how many bases she's covering. Yeah. She maybe they. You don't fucking know. Checking so many bases. Every box. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll be like, we want you to lead like DNI training to all these people. And I'm like, I am not versed in leading this training on diversity and inclusion. I can tell you my own experiences. I'm not the person to lead this. I think that also might be just, could that also be a touch of imposter syndrome? I feel like there are certain activities that people do where you're like, I'm not ready for this. That's like a very heavy topic. Yeah. You know, and I don't know how you become an expert in that without just doing it. Yeah. Also, I think it's reflective of your personality. Now that I'm hearing you say that those were the types of conversation that you were doing at work throughout the show, I was like, how does this bitch always have the perfect thing to say, no matter what the fuck has been thrown in her face? Yeah, it was like an example video of how to like diffuse tension with your yeah, coworkers. Like the HR video you watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, I see your point of view and that's really valid. And also I'm here. I was like, wow. Yeah. Dude, it was I like, mean, like, it was incredible. Class. And I think that's why America's in love with you. In addition to your face. But you're very beautiful and I'm having a tough time with it. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be like, I keep like kind of imagining you as prom queen and I'm like. Where do you want to be top or no, bottom? I, I, Did that get weird? Of course I want to be top now, but. Okay, well I'll be bottom. You're taller than I am. That's fine. Just put your arm. Oh my God. Just let's keep talking. Okay. No, no, I can't. Actually, I gotta say the Do way I I'm reading it. Do I smell bad because I forgot to put deodorant no, on? No, I love morning. how you smell. You smell like patchouli and hard work. Are you serious? Well, is that a compliment? That's a very much a especially the hard work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the and worst. I got the cat. It's the, <laughs> <laughs> the cat's kind of cozying up to me, so everyone's doing okay over here. We're meandering, <laughs> but I wanted to mention this because, like, 
this is why you're so good at the difficult situations. Because those aren't even difficult situations for you. You walked into work and they were like, Mal, we got another N word in the office. And you're like, okay, I got to yeah, go. Talk now about I got to go talk to that yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, where do I go from here? So when did you, you quit your job as soon as the show, you were like, I know this no. is the new route. No, no. Unfortunately, I was there for 10 years. I got laid Whoa. off recently. Are like, you serious? A couple months ago. Fantastic yeah. timing. No, I know. They saw the show and they were like, you're gay. They didn't even, the show was <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Are you a black dyke? Too far. <laughs> Too far. Get her out of here. Um, no, it just, ha I mean, it just happened. Like everybody else getting laid off right now. Mm. Yeah. And so perfect timing. Not here at the honest. Good Egg Films Corp. Patreon.com slash WHGS. We're, we just hired. Um, yeah. That, so that really is core to who you are. Yeah. And a shit ton of therapy. Because when I was, yes. So much therapy. Because when I was watching, if I had a hard hitting question for you, Mel, my hard hitting question would be, do you think there might be people watching the show who are like, she's too good at this. She's too good at diffusing 1000%. It's, it's so charismatic. It's so, it's so level headed. How do you respond to like a troll like that? It's number one. It sucks to hear that. Um, it especially sucks coming from people that look like me, right? Like that is the toughest part. Cause I'm like, why wouldn't your first thought be maybe this bitch has gone to a lot of therapy or like, how do you do it versus that's not real. She doesn't really respond that way. Um, so it's been a shit ton of therapy years of therapy and going weekly. Yoli and I also were in couples therapy for like a year, year and a half before the show. So you guys are very accustomed we do to having those conversations. Yeah, and, and getting to like the root of what the problem is and holding space for each other. And then also like losing three of your really good friends, literally like they died in a span of like two years, will really change how you speak to people. For me anyway, I can't, I don't know for everybody else, but for me, I'm like, damn, if this is the last time I get to see this person- oh. Like, let me make sure I say how I actually feel and not just respond angry and erratic and fuck things up. I just actually want to take care and hear you. And that's what it is. It's just a combination of that. It's not because I'm like faking it on TV. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. Yeah. Wow. That was actually more beautiful than I thought it would be. Whenever, <laughs> whenever something beautiful happens on this podcast, I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to? <laughs> what do I do with that? Do I shove a marshmallow in her mouth now? Like, <laughs> I, 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 far. <laughs> That's deep, the gag reflex. Deep, deep marshmallow. <laughs> I'll throw up on everything. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Wow. That With was that. beautiful. Thanks, friend. I also imagine, too, that it's like on reality TV in general, you're they're judging how level-headed you are against a pretty, not anything against anyone on the show, yeah. but reality TV in general against a pretty uh, specific and probably more boisterous section of the popular, like, I mean, reality TV is selected for like, am I making any sense? Are you're saying the clips that they're picking are going to be the ones that are more dramatic, dramatic and stuff. So it's like, so it's, it looks like, oh, this person's like other than whatever they cut from Vanessa's arc. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're seeing the most dramatic stuff. Yeah. So I articulated that very poorly, but I guess I'm just saying it's, it, the you're new to trash yeah. TV, Maddie. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. You've been watching your A24 films. I love A24. And your early I'm Scorsese student work. And the, it's just been the succession. big shave and succession or whatever. <laughs> the big shave is a reference that I'm not sure anyone will get. I don't know that. Um, I think it was Scorsese. Tar Taryn. <laughs> okay. Whatever. We're going to look it up. Yes. Question. The big shave donut man. Cool. Got it. <laughs> but yeah. Do you feel like it represented you? In an authentic way, yeah. Yeah. Very much so. I've had a lot of friends that'll like reach back out to me. I don't know why I was going to say homies, but then I'm like, white people say friends. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you can say homies. Thank you. This is a safe space. Okay, cool. So I got a lot of, I got a lot of niggas that, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I got a lot. Of, <laughs> well, I got a lot of friends that reached out to me and they were just like, it's really cool to see the person that we know you to be is actually who they showed on yes. television. Yeah. Like a lot, I've gotten a lot of that. So that's cool too. That's really um, cool to do something publicly and be like, I'm proud for my friends and family to see this. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. like, this is actually who she is for real. We've known you for years or I've had encounters with you and that's actually who you are. I love what you said in the reunion too, where you were like, this showed, this like showed the world that I'm like an incredible partner and you, be a great mother. That line, I was standing up in my chair like, yeah. <laughs> you really like Let's fully go. like, I hope this is the right baseball reference, but you like fully Babe Ruth that, like you pointed your bat 
out and were like, I am about to like show America that I'm the hottest <laughs> lesbian. I'm ready for marriage. I have it all. And you fucking like yeah, out, this is, out of the fucking park, dude. This is the out best the 10 hour dating profile I've ever seen in my life. Yes. Like well, that's a that's a nice thing about being a stand up comedian is you get to go almost audition for mm. everyone in the crowd. Mm. You get up there, you show your funniest stuff, you show who you are. You've done your half of the date in a compact, efficient way. Yeah. And then all you have to do is get to know this other person maybe after the show. Yeah. You did that for like a million lesbians. Oh, man. You know, and the reunion is crazy. We just shot that in this past January. Yes. The show was shot two years ago. Yes. Mm. And you watch it. We've been sitting on this. Yeah, we've been sitting on this this whole time. Wait, wow, two years ago? Yeah. Oh, wow, so you're not coming off of everything we just saw. That's like... You've had a lot of time to do other things. Well, we saw the the final cut of the show the day before the reunion was shot. Yes, and you binge it. And you binge it. Yeah. And you you binge the entire show. And then you go and talk about it. And I had just got shit news about my dad, some health stuff, oh, like so sorry. Sorry. right before it. And I couldn't get out of doing the reunion. And so you, Is I, he all right? yeah, he's cool. Okay. I go and do it and I'm like, I'm pissed. I'm like livid. You know, that's the most angry I ever get. I talk a lot of shit, but I'm like, that's probably the most angry you'll ever see me. But yeah, you do it. And I'm like, there's so many things I didn't see. I didn't know I would see, you know? So I was pissed when I got there. I saw Yoli and I'm like, I'm so angry oh, at man, you. The, the Hawaii moment was wild. That was like one of the more, I actually, I, I quite like Yoli. Yeah. Like I understand why you fell in love with her. Like I, she's warm, you know, at least from my perspective. And when she did that, when the Hawaii thing happened, I went, I literally like, I put my head in my hands. Cause I was like, I didn't, I did not want that for her. I also didn't know at that little party, the first one, mm-hmm. you know, when we're back with our partners, I didn't know that she was over there, like saying all the things like, I miss you and I love you and all these things. I didn't, I had no clue. I just thought my partner was like, I want to go check in on my ex. Cause that's the language that we use. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm like, cool, go do that. What lesbian doesn't check in on their recent ex? We all do it. <laughs> so do it. But I didn't see, it was such a big space. I didn't see what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. I saw none of that. I just trusted that my ex was doing what they said they were going to do. It's hard. Yeah. I feel like you probably had the hardest rewatch of anybody in the cast. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. It was weird. It was terrible. And then the thing with Vanessa, I wish they would have shown that more when I asked her like what, what she was doing. She, Vanessa had slid into my DMs when we were back. That was also some wild behavior. Yeah. It's Telling your me. partner. Right. You handle your partner. Or talk to Yoli, but don't talk to me. It, this is like the most furthest person removed. It was it was weird. So I was like, let me just address it. I feel like you're stirring the pot. I don't really like that. Yeah. You're not like putting me up on game or like, you're not helping me out by letting me know my partner and your partner are still in communication. My partner told me that they might reach out. We're cool over here. Like you're just being messy. That yeah. was my perspective at the time. Yeah. I had one other thought this is this is like a a race commentary thing about what you were saying just to go back because I'm curious you were saying like when people who look like you reach out to be like you were inauthentic or whatever don't you feel like at least in my experience with friends and the media don't you feel like there's a category particularly of uh, for black people but especially for black women that like you're have this pressure especially with what you do and being on reality TV of like representing your entire fucking community in these interactions. So I'm curious if like when people reached out to be like, you were inauthentic, did you ever feel like not only hurt because that's a very hurtful thing to say, but also like, you know that I'm the only black person on this show, right? Yeah. Like did that play into it all? Absolutely. Yeah. That's part of it. The other part is like check Check your like unconscious bias. It's really interesting to me that for me, when I present the way that I do and I'm calm and all these things, your first thought is inauthenticity. But when let's just say Xander presents very similarly. Yes. You're so Nobody's like, you're being inauthentic. They're like, oh, we're so sad for you. Oh, this really sucks. You're so right. So that's what, that's the part that really hurts. It's like, it's the unconscious bias that people just 
play into. I have a little bit of that with my comedy because I have like such a roasty personality and like sometimes I yell on the podcast and I'm like, yeah. if it were a guy, would would you ever think that? Or would you like, Bill Burr is like a professional screamer. Like that's what Bill, it's just, just a, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the part that hurts. It's like their initial thought that I'm like, why did you, why didn't you think anything different? You know, mm. or even with my job, like nobody thought for any moment that, oh, maybe Mal does work in corporate America. Maybe she doesn't talk about what she does on television because she's a black woman in America and cannot, my rebound doesn't look the same. If I fuck up on television, it's like, oh no, we got to You're not going to rebound from this. This is a big stain. Can't do it. That's how I navigate the world. Nobody ever thought for a second, like, well, what does Mal actually, what does she do for a living? Nobody asked that. They were just like, oh, she might be broke, broke bitch. We you only want somebody else. Yeah. I mean, I guess to be fair, a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're seeing that in in the response of the comments Mm -hmm. calling you broke. Also IVF is just expensive. I literally went in for my like $40,000 or something. Well, it depends on how many eggs you have. And by the way, when I went in, I did, I did get some like really good news. Can I tell you guys about what happened? First of all, I thought, where are we at time wise? Oh my God. It's fucking flying, dude. I I actually Uh love when we break format. Yeah, it's really know. fun. Yeah, it's really fun. I don't really want to talk about sex. My coming out story. <laughs> okay, I'm but so sorry. We don't sorry. have to. No. I don't even, I 69 last night. What? <laughs> you don't like 69ing? You look like you were going to walk out. You were like, that <laughs> that's is. That's the line. That's it. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> that's the line. Um, 69ing fan? I've never done it. What? What? Really? Yeah. Really? Height difference. How tall are you? I'm 5'3". Very helpful to have equal height with the 69. Mm. Especially if you're doing someone on top, 69ing. As opposed to side, side to side. Oh, I never even thought about side to side. Yeah. You're side fancy, to- side to side. <laughs> yeah, that sounds hard. I think it just enables you to like, when you're the same height, my partner's a little shorter than I am, but she's a very long torso. And I have very long legs and a very <laughs> short torso. So we actually do quite well in the 69. Because our torsos are roughly equal. This is lesbian you have this math. Down to a science. This is lesbian math for you. Got it. This is the dad. This is the masked dad coming back. What are you? What are you running on the torso? <laughs> Thirty inches. Yeah. This is non-Euclidean geometry. Euclidean <laughs> <Nice. laughs> geometry. Yeah, Clidian, yeah. is Clidian. <laughs> um, but we six. Maybe this will be my story, and I'll update more on the eggs later. But um, when we need to do a quickie. Because uh, we were going to see her brother play in a band at pianos. I'm learning so much about you so fast. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm listening. Okay. Well, when we knew to, we're both kind of into giving. So our quickie mm-hmm. routine is we do a 69 to start because we both are like. It's an equitable give. It's an equitable give. Wow. Both of us get going. I think this is such a pro tip for giving. Like for if you're into giving and both partners are into giving. If both partners are into just receiving, I don't know how that relationship works. Boring. Yeah, very boring. Huh. I think most people are a little bit of both is the reality. It's just like anything else, a spectrum. But we, we but the, it was funny today because the math was off. There was something going on with the pillows where she was like, did I grow? I cannot, <laughs> I reach. cannot reach. Yeah. So with we have the to pillows. maneuver the pillows around. Cause it's a little bit, if you put pillows under your neck. Oh yeah. Cause your neck gets tired. You, to, you know, yeah. you're reaching. That's true. And your tongue gets tired if you're reaching. Pro tip. Yeah. So you put a couple pillows, but I think I like leaned too far up. Yeah. But. And then you had a face full of butthole. But I love a face full of butthole. You are a real stand up person. <laughs> An activist of sorts. I, I just, I really love sex. I think I, I am willing to try almost anything and I love intimacy. So I love like weird shit, dude. Like I, I love period sex. I love licking a butthole. I'll suck your toes. I'll do, I will do whatever makes me feel close to you. I love like, I love when my girlfriend is like so sweaty and I can just bury my nose into her armpit. Wow. I just love like the close, the intimacy. (laughs) This is wild. (laughs) I don't know. Does this not resonate with you, Mal? Sure it does. (laughs) Would you? Slide into my DMs even more now. (laughs) You totally do not have to answer this and we can cut it if it's too personal. Tell me. Would you consider yourself like a kinky person or are you pretty like 
Stop flirting with our guests, please. <laughs> That's not flirting. That was a, it's a sex podcast. You pan, I've never seen you pan you do back that. over to me and I'm <laughs> naked. <laughs> well, answer her question and then I have a question. Would I consider myself? I mean, I'm pretty explorative. I don't really have many boundaries. Mm. I think that's the furthest I'm going to answer that. All right. Respect. Yeah. I, I know you don't have to answer this one either, but like there was a reference to like maybe some work that you and Yoli were working on for your sex life? Intimacy. Intimacy. We went to an intimacy coach. Yeah. Do you mind talking about that a little bit or is that yeah. something you'd like, no, like no. keep off the table? No, it's fine. I think intimacy coaches are when like, it's not just for sex, but it's mainly when you are having problems like reconnecting. Mm. Mm. So it's really focused. Let Our coach was focused less on sex and more on how do we reestablish trust and like rebuild our foundation and our values. I think the values. edit failed you there. It did. Because it made it sound like almost that you didn't want to be touched. Right. And then we had that scene where like you guys were getting intimate and you were cuddling with Lexi also. Um, not that that's like sex or whatever, but it had several scenes where I was like, wait, this doesn't map. Someone who a few minutes ago didn't want to be touched on the shoulder, according to this edit. Right. Then is having sex. I thought they kind of glazed over that a little bit. No, I am not a touch me not. I think you should definitely invite Yoli on to the show, though, because- I can't speak for her dating history, but I am very far from a touch me not. Got it. The so there was some maybe it. potential projection or historical. Very much so. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to say is go down on Mal. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Your facial reactions. I'm so glad we have the video because listener, if you're listening to this on audio, this is an episode to go on video. Mm -hmm. I think we should just have several zooms on your, you already know this. You've done yeah. like, like things about this. Yeah. Listener, it's summertime. It's sweaty. Okay. It's a sweat here in New York, especially it is sweaty. And I know for me, I just need a little something extra to make sure that I feel totally clean. And that's why I love my Hello Tushy Bidet. The Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. I know for me, when I'm feeling on the stinkier side, the Hello Tushy Bidet just gives me that bump in confidence, you know? Whether it's for myself or people I'm spending some, some intimate time with. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in just a few months. Every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash WHGS and use promo code WHGS to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash WHGS for 10% off. Did you have gay sex this week? I am not going to answer that. I'm having gay sex right now. You are. You're, on, you the, you're on the gay sex couch as, as yes. it has been historically known. Did you... Did you Six nine here? No, God, no. Okay, cool. No, no funny business has ever happened in the studio. Actually. Yeah, nothing funny has ever happened where the podcast is recorded. <laughs> nothing funny has happened on this po comedy Bro, podcast. That, was so, that is our reassurance. That might yeah. be the fastest anyone has ever done a joke, like in response to that. I that was lightning. I mean, you like that was almost yeah. before the words left. Nothing ever funny. <laughs> nothing funny has ever happened on this podcast. That was the fastest I've ever seen. That was the most Jewish. <laughs> like I'm Jewish. That's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apologies. Also Jewish. Yay, yay. Lexi's oh, Jewish. So yeah. Well, that didn't make the cut either. I hate that we're talking about the ultimatum well, so much. I knew. I don't. Care. This is what the people want. Lexi's Jewish, well, and I we had. That. How did you know that? First of all, her name. Fair. Second we're both of, Jewish. Her, to that. her yeah. face. Oh. I, I'm only. I'm only half Jewish. Oh, okay. Her face. I mean, well, I am too. But I was raised quarter. The politics of that. My mom. I'm. I'm Jewish on my mother's side. My mother's half. Wow, that was the most Jewish answer. Well, technically, if you want to get into it. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at what I do and all of everything about me, I am fully Jewish. Huh. My hip hurts. I'm cold. Okay. So I dare not laugh at any of this. I'm just staying here like, mm -hmm. you're, doing, uh -huh. you're like, that's so beautiful. You're doing the flip of what white lesbians do. Now you're black lesbian yes. Jewish people. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh huh. Yes. 
Pickles. Heard, seen. <laughs> White fish salad. <laughs> um, we had dates. We had a Shabbat dinner. Oh, oh you did? That's we, we did that. They didn't, they didn't show it. Also, her dad works in the diamond industry. Jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Jewish. Oh. Um, See, I, I didn't know. She had me say the prayer. I was shitting myself. I'm like, Lexi, I can't. <laughs> I'm, don't have me fuck this up. <laughs> like, this is a community I cannot be canceled from. So <laughs> let's take it easy, buddy. And you know, I, I try to do the thing. I'm not going to try to do it right now. I'm going to leave that where it was. But I did try to say the prayer before Shabbat dinner. That's, Wait, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, it was cool. You tried. I did try. She taught me the right way to pronounce the words. So <sighs> that's so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, We I, I might bring in Bree soon. But oh, sorry, I was supposed to remind you. No, don't worry about it. I got it. Okay. You, you are so funny. <laughs> I reminded myself and you were like, fuck, I fucked up. I did. The task is saved. Yeah. Oh, my coming out story, guys. <gasps> Do it. I've been wanting to share it with somebody. Oh Please. my God. I, we, oh we, my gosh. Yeah. My father walked in on me <gasps> in high school. I know. That's a way. That's a way. Oh. What was the, um, were you 69ing? Well, as a writer, the no. show don't tell principle of this is pretty good. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but yes. I definitely wow. had glazed donut face. And I was like, oh. and we know what that is. We know what that is. Who, who had it? You? Me. Wow. It's terrible. Wow. And I looked right into my father's eyes like, oh my God. You looked right into his eyes. Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> and I smiled because I smile a lot when I feel awkward or so when things are funny. Everybody, everybody does that. Yeah. I smiled right at him. It was terrible. Do? He's Were you pissed. Naked? No. Was she naked? She had like a t shirt on. Who bearing it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yes. classic. And this exactly was like right. in your house? It was in my parents' house. The shame. I had no business doing that. How old were you? <laughs> Probably like 15, 14. Fuck 15. Yeah, dude. Right? Fucking kill it. <laughs> You're the only other Send person it. I met. Wait, well, how old were you when you went down on a woman? For I was 15. I was like 14 or 15. You're the only person mm -hmm. I've ever met who has me beat on that. We were the same age. Well, you might've been 14 though. Fair. I was in ninth grade. I was 15. Fair, fair. She was 14. Yeah. Canceled. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Insane age gap. I'm problematic. <laughs> the power dynamic between six months, <laughs> me and this girl who is in my class. <laughs> He's pissed. Think about any like, I don't know, immigrant father who's from an older generation. And he's like, Where's what he are from? you doing? Jamaica Cuba. Or he's from Cuba. Cuba. Okay. My mom's Jamaican and it was not good. Did he, what was the fallout after that? They didn't and speak to me for like my entire year. Like they didn't speak. It was to you? actually rather traumatic. You oh were my God. Yeah, it sounds rather yeah. traumatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't speak to me. I was fourteen and my parents didn't speak to me for yeah. a year. They were like sliding food under the, <gasps> under the door, like here, because we have to feed you. Are you serious? No, they didn't do that. I don't want to like, get since them canceled. You love eating. Yeah, <laughs> eat more. <laughs> yeah, fish again. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> they were pissed wait that's crazy are they and stop me if this is too personal are they kind of oh cool they're super now? cool now oh that rocks yeah they're my best friends that's we got so through sick. it we did the things i'm glad you're saying that because i feel like I, I come from a place of privilege whenever i say to people like my mom freaked out my mom freaked out but i'm also like from new york city white my mom is like you know, like exposed to gay people. Yeah. I'm not the example of like the kid that with the immigrant parents or, oh, you know, like the, the deep religion or like from Alabama yeah. where there's just like less education. So I always feel like, and I try to tell people, I'm like, they're gonna come around. Yeah. Occasionally, rarely there are parents who don't come around, but the vast majority, even in a case like yours where it's immigrant parents they come around they do i thought that they wouldn't they i mean that year after that was horrible it was terrible they would barely speak to me they would like i think you know the only reason why they didn't kick me out is because like i'm still their child i yeah. was still their kid but it was terrible and then i had a boyfriend and then they were like yay she's not gay phase prom queen yeah all the things and then i was like no i'm a flaming lesbian. <laughs> and then I, now it's like a teachable moment. I get to, they ask me the questions. We're very candid and transparent with each other. I was talking to my 89 year old father about anal sex the other day. <laughs> I'm like telling him, you know, guys, your G spot's up there, dude. He's was like, he not aware? No. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm like, you can come from there. He's like, I wish I'd known that before my hips gave out. That, that part, right? He's like, I don't know no. if I can take it now. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, it's science, Dad. I can't make this up, bro. Your Did butthole he report is back? like, no, he didn't try it, but he was like, <laughs> 
just, they take it all in and they're just learning and he's just mind blown. Like, whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was like, ask mom, dude. <laughs> with your butt. Cool. Have they seen the show? Yeah. I was going to ask mm -hmm. what was their reception? Nothing. They're super supportive. My mom's like, I'm so proud of you. You know, that's so they, cool. They can barely work Netflix to begin with. So <laughs> they might've seen like the first four episodes. Was there a scenario where you thought, ah, they'll never find out. You know what I mean? Like, was there, was there a scenario where for a moment you were like, they don't know how to turn on the TV. I could get away with this. Yes, for sure. I'm like, they'll never know. They keep asking about Netflix. They'll never know. <laughs> and then my aunt came over and showed them and now they know. <laughs> but it's so funny. They have no concept of like reality TV versus like big movies. So they think I'm like a movie star and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> no, you are. I don't You're know. You're bigger than a movie star. The internet has just totally changed, changed yeah. how we how we see people and who, what fame is. And honestly, it's all so stupid. Yes. But if it can help you find your partner, then I think it's, that's not stupid at all. Or my way into hosting a show. So yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, like your career. I mean, for me, it's been great for my career. Can I use my section to ask a question? Maddie. Yes. You piece Please, of shit. If I may shit. raise my hand. Okay. Yes, the thing Maddie. That I was going to ask, stop me if this is like, Maddie, just always just ask it. it, Maddie. Just it might always. be a dumb question. Maddie's like the most polite, She's so neurotic good. Per I know, and okay, she's thanks. such a genius. It's like, how can you be <laughs> this much of a genius and still be asking for permission? You're better You're at so this sweet. than I am. Right. Like, Everything that comes out your mouth, I'm viewing it in like Comic Sans. I also <laughs> pink font, and I'm like, say anything. <laughs> say anything to me. I'm like, so, no, it's not I problem. I just love That's what's so nice. happened over here with the sitting. What do you mean? I, you know what? Ignore me. I don't know what I'm talking about. There's nothing weird about this. There's nothing different going on here. It's giving a scissor setup. I don't know. It, it really is. <laughs> Go ahead, Patty. <laughs> Should I get the banana? Yeah. I'm like, excuse Whoa. me, if you don't mind, if I can be polite and ask, could I watch? <laughs> You're like, sure. I won this. I won this at, at Coney Island. Isn't that crazy? Recently? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like really recently. It's an upsetting addition to our professional lives. What did you play? <laughs> How many times did you play? I have to look it? at its face. Great question. So it's one of those. When I saw the bananas, when I went into Coney Island, I was like, I'm winning a banana. It's the one where you have three quite heavy blocks stacked on top of each other on kind of like a large platform. And you have to knock all the blocks clear, including the bottom one off the platform. You can't just topple them. So Ashley hyping up. herself up, including the bottom one. <laughs> know what I did out there, okay? <laughs> I asked them, I said, how many people today have won the banana? It was late in the day. Two people won the banana. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is very like a nine year old being like, and I held my breath all the way across the pool. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> and then they gave me the biggest cupcake on the swim team. Mind you, 25 yard lane. <laughs> okay. What do you want me to say? Ooh, tell exactly. us the banana story. Banana. Banana, banana story. Banana. Okay. So <laughs> banana story. I think I did. I, I did. save up all my niceness to say one mean thing. Like you're being a kid in a swimming pool. Yeah. And it's accurate. Sorry, I cut you off. I no, think, no. Honestly, I think kid in a swimming pool, like doing the hold my breath challenge is my gender and why women are attracted to me. <laughs> You're, you're the Never kid thought about it like that. Take out you, the child part of it. Just focus on the energy and the vibe. You've got goggles being like, watch this. And you're doing a backflip underwater where you have to kick like 10 times. Because, I was that kid. Because <laughs> we're sure. masculine without being threatening. We're all the fun parts of masculinity. It's the, true. the silly goofy, the showing off, the bragging. It's true. But a completely harmless. We're holding our breath in a pool. That's it. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I think probably fifth or sixth time I did five or six of them to win the banana, to win the banana. Good job. Good job. <laughs> this is how what happened to us now. A few minutes ago, we were trying to cuddle very, very awkwardly on this couch. And now you're telling me, you know what? You go to fucking Island and get the banana. You go to fucking Coney Island. And is this our first fight? This is our first fight. Okay. And the only way we can settle it is we have to go to Coney Island and throw bean bags at the blocks. Cut to me. I'm a talking head. I knew from the very beginning they weren't going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at each other as we're throwing the bean yeah. bags. We're like, 
I'm using the soundboard to play intense oh, reality, yeah. like or- orchestral music. Dun dun. Yeah, they have, they have that one sound <laughs> the effect. Banana. They have that one sound effect that's almost like a meme in reality TV right now. It's like that screech. They've been doing it for like 20 years. To, <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about on reality TV? What? No. My, My friend, friend, listener, write in. You know what I'm talking about. Wait. My friend, shout out to Nick Cartwright. Nick Cartwright, hilarious comedian. Comedian, Look him up. He always had this thing he talked about where he wanted to pitch a reality TV show, but the band is live. And so <laughs> they're doing all the dramatic music, but you just, the people are having a fight and they pan over and there's a guy on cymbals like, Psh. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so good. That'd be great as an improv show. It really would be. People, improvisers doing an improv, sh- an improv show in the format of reality TV. Or like really live good. couples therapy. Yeah. yeah oh my gosh, great. that would be even better. Live wah, wah, wah. Wait, where, where we, we have that one. We actually, why are we doing all the sound effects? I literally made a board for this. <laughs> Ashley's like, I-69 yesterday. <laughs> oh wait, that was the wrong one. Sorry, I meant to do, I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to do. A this 69. has been here the whole time. It's been you want it? Yes. <laughs> Please. Are take you over. kidding me? Where is this horn? How funny is this? I made this like three years ago. Oh God, Charlie Brown. Yeah, he's my favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite you were with movie. You only talking about Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa mouthing fuck off to Xander. <laughs> um, um, Vanessa barely penetrating Ray. <laughs> Wait, I didn't mean that one. Wait, this is such a, this is such a clip. This is such a, we have to do more. We must do more of these. Um, 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 uh, Lexi's dad talking about uh, picking out rings for your potential engagement. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, help me out. We need like forty-five oh my more gosh. of these. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ray in a fever dream because everyone is freaking out, and she's just literally a software engineer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> Xander, Xander defending Vanessa to everyone else on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the host, uh, the host, just trying to figure out what lesbians are. Even what? <laughs> um, uh, oh my god, this is so good. This is going to be such an incredible clip. Uh, can we do like ten more of these? Yeah, do you mind? Aussie saying they're trans and then just get completely glossed over. <laughs> oh, I don't have one for that. I don't have one. <laughs> that, that is really we got that. We can get that. I, I, I did it, Joe. I would. I would actually go with. <laughs> That's what I would go with. That's exactly it. Um, Aussie uh, realizing they need to be in therapy immediately out on the street. <laughs> Golf clubs. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. We didn't even talk about Tiff. Tiff. Just Tiff. Oh, man. Because <laughs> we just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> We're just unsure where it's going. We don't know. <laughs> to be continued. We're not sure. Um, um, I'm wondering if there was anything else. We're probably, oh, we got to bring in Bree. Bree. And Maddie had something. Oh, I did have a question, but we've kind of passed it. It's no, like do not. It, do it, do it. Okay. I, I, made, I made a clip machine out of that. <laughs> yeah. You can keep it for the rest of the, uh, for the rest uh, of the show. Let me. Furtive moaning. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you remember that? It is for. Oh, uh, yes. The subtitle, uh, furtive moaning. Yeah. Uh, um, let me go grab my computer so we can Skype in Brie. Cool. Okay, should I ask the question or should we just hold off ask for a second? Ask the question, I'm listening. Okay, well, the question I was gonna ask when we were talking about like coming out and your dad and everything and and then where you were like, oh, I had a, I had a boyfriend and I was prom queen and like, is there um, not at all to conflate like being masked with, with gender necessarily, but like, was there anything when you're thinking about your parents' perspective of like, oh, maybe if I'm more femme presenting, they'll like, accept it more or like Ashley did you feel that at all that like a pressure to be femme presenting because people are so focused on the gender roles of the whole thing or is that an insane question not really no I mean I was always a tomboy the only thing that was more feminine about me was my hair like it was longer mm. but no I wasn't buying my own clothing right like my mom <laughs> 
You're like, with what money? <laughs> with what? I'm 15. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I remember going like school shopping and she'd be like, why do you only shop in the boys section? She's crying. She's sobbing. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm like, Tommy Hilfiger overalls. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good jacket. My mom's like, no, this sucks. Why are you like this? I, remember I had a pair of like, um, like shoes that were meant for like skateboarding. Like yeah. they had like, like the grip on them to like skate. I could not skateboard, but I was like, th these are so important to me. And I wore them every day for two years until they fell apart. Yeah. My mom was like, you have to throw them away. She's like, I don't even care that they're boys shoes. They are falling apart. Yeah. Like people think that we're not taking care of you. Get new <laughs> I, shoes. I had such issues with clothing growing up. Like, yeah. uh, um, it, it was very, very difficult for me. And because of that, I would keep items of clothing that I like, felt like were me, I, I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't let go of them because I was like, I'm never going to find another pant, pair of pants that like, Oh my gosh, is that why I way? couldn't let go of the shoes? Cause they were the why? only second that I was allowed to be a boy for a minute. Yes. <laughs> uh Oh, okay. They should have known I was going to be a flaming lesbian. I grew up in Southern California. I was like riding BMX bikes and skateboarding mm -hmm. and wearing the same cargo shorts every single day. And like, yep. Shopping in all the uh, little skateboard magazines like CCS and like Birdhouse, all these little magazines that we had. I was for sure a dyke. Yeah. Were they upset at all by the fact that you were a tomboy or if you were a straight tomboy, would it have been like, do your thing? I don't know. I mean, I played basketball, so there was that too. Mm. Listener, when I was growing up, I was terrible at foreign language. I, I got horrible grades. I was so embarrassed to speak out loud. Does that resonate with any of you? That's why I'm so excited to be sharing Babbel with you as a sponsor of the show. I absolutely love Babbel. If you don't know it, it is an app to quickly and effectively learn another language. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, check it off this summer with Babbel. Because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. I've been using it for three weeks now. I cannot believe how helpful it has been for regular conversations. It feels like I'm just diving right in and I can get around for my upcoming vacation this summer. And that's because Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and your accent, which has always been really tough for me, but I'm getting better. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove that Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. I know for me, it has been way more effective. And here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash WHGS. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash WHGS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash WHGS. Rules and restrictions may apply. Also, where do you tend to shop? You're very tall and you're like lean. So I imagine that's helpful. But like, where do you tend to, oh. What is she, how does she want me to? Oh my oh, God. So Should I put my leg up? What do you mean? <laughs> Hi, Bree. Bree, we just, we wanted to get How's you. It going? It's been such a fun episode and I knew you would die if I didn't bring you in to meet Mal. My heart would have been absolutely crushed. Like I would, I would have ruined my entire year, to be honest. Do you now? We were doing a game, so we can continue to do the, the yeah. game. But do you have any questions? Because you are an ultimatum expert. You are the leading ultimatum expert, yes. queer ultimatum expert on in. Yes. And I'm sorry that I'm moving so quickly. I'll like connect you guys after this. But um, also looking very queer today. I also have camo on. Did you all do this um, for no, me? Maybe. Do you like camo? I love camo. Yes. We did we it did. for you. <laughs> we did do this for you. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions? But also we were doing this really fun sound effect game where we were just saying moments from the ultimatum. And then um, Mal was instantly clicking a uh, soundboard sound that represented the the moment. So oh, we can I do, love that but too. You, you really watched the show in depth and I wanted to know if you had any hard hitting questions for, for Mal that I you do. need answered. I, I, I have some questions that I would love to ask. Okay. May I begin? Yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, Barbara Walters. <laughs> the gayest little notebook I've ever seen in my entire life. Wait, everyone, it's everyone. Fluffy. Bree's here. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Do you want to replace Maddie? <laughs> sure. I'm looking for a job, so yeah. Mal needs to be here like all the time to do the sound effects. This is so great. Thank you. Okay. 
The first question I have is <laughs> on the show, you came off suspiciously perfect. What I would asked. your exes say is wrong with you? Oh, oh. Let's ask that last question again. What would your exes say is wrong with you? I think she wanted the first part of the question. Suspiciously on the perfect. Show. <laughs> on the show, you came off suspiciously perfect. I, I just think you're perfect, but I think a lot of people are like, how are you so perfect? So what would your exes say is wrong with you? Well, I think first there's lots of therapy that I've gone to. So let's lead with that. And then there was this really beautiful story that you missed out on, Brie, but we won't go yes, back into yeah, that. We, we covered it, Brie. Yeah. Basically, Mal works in a field where she's very accustomed to dealing with high pressure, difficult conversations, emotional labor, yada, yada, yada. Okay. That's why she's so good at this. And then there was also covered. some other like, it's covered, Brie, and you'll watch it in the episode. Next. Next. We gotta keep Don't moving. worry. Yeah. Next. What would my exes say is oh wrong with me? You're quick switching today, Brie. It's quick switch. It's the lightning round with quick switch Brie. Literally, this is such a fun little segment. But would your, yeah, would your exes like if, okay, I, I need more of a particular answer on that. Like if your exes went to lunch with somebody and they were like, oh, what drove you nuts about Mal? What would they say? Mm, they'd probably say that, oh man, this is going to get me in trouble. They would probably <laughs> say that. I didn't want to commit. Like, I just didn't want to go How to the next How could you want to commit when you look like this? How could you possibly I, want to settle down to the last possible moment being this human being? Thanks. Okay? <laughs> Let this Thank woman you. live her hot life. Okay? That's probably true. Stop. That's Leave fair. her alone. I think that's it. I think okay, that's what they'd well, say. Jeez, don't come at the messenger here. I'm just the girl with the questions, Ash. I okay. don't have a lot of okay. exes. I want to be clear. For anyone watching, I don't have that many exes, so there's that. Okay, I have another <laughs> question like, for you. Who gives a shit um, about that? Your friend, your friend <laughs> appeared on the show, and She's when they were on the show, business. they already thought that you were absolutely nuts for doing it. How did they feel post watching the show? But your friend was my favorite person on maybe the entire Alicia? series. Yeah. How did they Literally. feel post show? Yeah. Because they already thought it was crazy. They were like, blink twice if you need help. Like, they were they were one of my favorite people ever. They were hilarious. Well, we went on the show. I think they were confused, uh, especially in their interaction yeah. with Yoli, because they also spent time with Yoli and I. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, we had, we, we had a plan. Like, we had a plan, right? Like, yeah, you talk about the show and you talk about what you want to uncover while you're there. But it's like, you're telling each other, like, it's you for me, so... I don't care. Explore whatever you want. Right. Do whatever you want. Let's learn the things we need to learn because ultimately we want to be together. So my friend was mm -hmm. like, what is actually going on? What the hell is going on? She's really confused. <laughs> yeah. Very like, <laughs> I, love this it. Is I figured that though. That's what I figured yeah. about each couple. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. So did anything like shock your friends post show, particularly about Yoli because they really thought you were each other's people? Everything shocked all of our friends. <laughs> we <laughs> The whole shit shocked everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you Not know. Not you. No. You seem to be the only one that was like, yeah, I knew she was going to fall in love with Xander. You like, I don't know. Literally. If it was the, I, I don't know if it's the beauty of the edit, but literally the whole time it's like, I know she's into white masculine women. I'm like, I yes. know she's going to fall in love with someone named Xander. Like you got in there and you were like, Hey, are any of you named Xander and born on uh, October 8th? She's going to love you. <laughs> she's, I love you. She's going to love you for sure. Um, yeah. You know, I'm like the first, I hate to tell her business, but whatever. We'll have her on the show at some point. Sure. We, we'll I mean, I her. guess we're signed up at some point. Um, I'm the first black mm -hmm lesbian she's ever dated so i know what her type is when i met her we were friends and when we got there i'm like oh shit she's gonna mm -hmm. i've seen her in like in love with somebody in like th a three-month relationship so it wasn't i wasn't so oh, you were friends before before we got together yeah. and she was dating somebody else right and it was a very new relationship that she was she showed the same like vigor and like you know way Look, for some people just some people uh some people you haul Listener, yeah. if you're at home and this is you. It's okay. It's okay. And I know it's all of you. I know it's 95% of it's you. It's fine. So I guess that's why I came off kind of like, it's okay. Because I'm like, when we get back to real life, real right. life is going to kick in. Like, you're going to be like, oh, what was I thinking? Or 
Whatever, it'll be a great experience still. You'll yeah. have that in your library of experiences. Yeah, you really, I guess you were really. But you're going like, to come home. Right. You were really like, you're going to like, this is going to be a thing and it's going to be over. And then by the end of it, I'm sure you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I called all of this. How did I not yeah. call this part? Yeah. 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 That makes so much more sense because I think people were kind of like, like, you're almost too chill about this. Like people wanted you to be like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I think you had one moment where you kind of broke down and you were like that. What got you like back in the ring? What do you mean like back in the ring of fighting for my partner? Well, you had this. Yeah, you had this moment where you're like, I'm done. I'm toast. And I think a lot of people would have called it. But like you kept showing up. Was it just that you genuinely thought at the end it's like it's all going to not matter because we're going to be together? Yes. Yes. And in the grand scheme of things, it's only three weeks. It's a 10 week commitment. Three weeks with somebody new. We've been in therapy for a year and a half now weekly. Like we can make we can get through this. Okay, I had another follow up question about this. Um, you have good questions, Brie. What I know, and she's doing this so... Brie is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, like lighthearted and fun <laughs> and like silly. You didn't warn and, me about this pressure. And and now and now she's fully Anderson Cooper on CNN. I, came on, with a, I came on with a job. When you assign me a job, oh I'm going to follow gosh. through. You, you And you're okay. doing it. My next question is, has there been <laughs> any post-reunion up? rebounding? Um, Not on my end. That was another part of it. Once you... Once we do the thing and we propose and do the stuff and then we break up, I am not a spin the black person. So <laughs> we can't, we can't come try it again here, buddy. Can't do that. Okay. So some one-sided attempts at a rebound, per perhaps. We can't do that here. I don't know about anybody else. Maybe some other people try to rebound, but no, not okay. Yoli and I. Not for you. Okay. And my final question is. Wow, these are good. Yeah, she's really good. <laughs> You're so good. She's an expert. Was there, because you, you've you stated that you are basically in this mindset, you're like, I'm for sure ending up with Yoli. Like, this is only three weeks. We're doing our thing. And then we're, we, you know, we're moving on. Was there ever a genuine romantic possibility of choosing Lexi as a life partner? Or was that just kind of for the show? You know the answer to this question, Brie. You know the answer to this question, Brie. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think maybe in the wild... Had we had Lexi and I, well, Lexi and I are also like 10 years apart. So there's a big age gap for me that I'm uncomfortable with. Um, right, right. But maybe in the wild, had we met this way and went through the questions the same way the show is set up? Mm -hmm. Possibly. I think like Lexi and I really did have a real bond. We still speak every single day. Um, I, I speak to her parents. So maybe if she was a little bit older and this happened organically, in the wild, oh my possibly. Gosh, your parents are so sad that you guys aren't together. I just know it. I know it in my heart and soul. They still have me. They still call me their daughter, so it's fine. They didn't lose me completely. Are you closer to the parents than you are to Lexi? No. Okay. okay. No. Um, well, kind of. I don't know. I talk to her dad quite often. <laughs> I'd never tell her that, but he's my boy. Oh, they're holding out hope. They're holding out hope for sure. Um, Any moment that you want uh, Mal to do a soundboard reaction to? Oh, the moment that Mal uh, got down on um, Mal's knee and then um, Yoli just kind of stared blankly back. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? What are we looking for? Yeah, that would be. <laughs> it was that moment. You know what's so wild is as a consumer of this, I think everyone was screaming at their TVs like, what the fuck? Because anyone would be like over the moon. We really didn't want you to ask. I'll give you a little tea. There's my first time sharing tea, spilling the tea here. Before we, before the proposal day, Yoli and I went to like a beach or something, right? To just go talk about things off camera. Cause you have nest cams. You're always monitored. And we went to go talk about things. And I'm like, Hey, you came in this thing. Unsure if I wanted to marry you or not. I don't know how, cause our parents had just met each other like a couple months before that. I was moving down the path slower than you wanted, but definitely down the path. So I'm like, yeah. we've gone through this, this experiment, this show, you know that I want to marry you now. Right. And she's like, yeah, I, I do know. And I said, is it necessary that I propose to you in front of like yeah, everyone? Yeah. Is that I necessary? I have often wondered about this exact scenario what you're describing yeah i asked her is it necessary that i do this like we can just both decide we can do whatever we want with this we can both decide that we yeah. didn't want to work out and then leave 
And then we still have to go home, right? Like, yeah, you break up on television, but you still have to yeah. go home and like unpack or, yes. or do whatever you got to do. Yeah. And I remember her being like, I still think it's important that you propose because then I still feel like you're dragging your feet. And I'm like, oh okay, like wh- what? No. Okay. And I, I mean, I, I told my, I told her parents and my parents what my intentions were. Right. I'm like, see, to me, if I heard that, if I, if I had that same conversation with my partner and they said that I would be like, okay, something in them clicked and they a hundred percent figured out that they want to be with me. If like, I've just got to show up with that gesture because the fact that she said, you've got to ask. And then she still was so confused. Like, don't ask someone to ask unless you're sure. And remember, I'm not the one who gave the ultimatum. I received it. Yes. So you were yes. sure from the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's wow. That makes it. You're you're where you are supposed to be. Yeah. I think yeah. That is so. the kindest way I can put that. Yeah. You are yeah. exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Drowning, drowning in pussy. Absolutely <laughs> swimming in it. America's dyke heartthrob. You you are a prince of pillow princesses. You are <laughs> swimming in it. A comforter king. A I, heard, comfort, a comforter I heard that on the king. internet recently. A That's comforter great. king. I love that. You you are where you're supposed to be. Bree, thank you very much. This was fantastic. I'm sorry I came in so strong, but you know I had a job to do and. And you did, yeah, it. You you did, did it. it fast yeah, do and, it. And, and furious. And Brie was like, you. what did you do on this day of this day? <laughs> Mal. Huh, Mal? <laughs> what did you do? She's Shabon Brie. Did her. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later, Brie. Thank you. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Okay. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Well, this was an incredible, incredible episode. Thank you so much. Do you Fun? have anything you want to plug? No. Plug? No. Your Instagram? Oh yeah, you Your can follow me at. Uh, gigs. I go by Mal. Man, I internet. wish you were here in the city. I would have you back all the time. For real? Yes, yes, of course. Maybe I'll be here more often. Maybe I'm going down to Atlanta um, for a show in November. Oh, so then I'll you see you. I'll I'll come to your show. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. man, let's figure out how we can record again. Follow me on the internet. Follow my Amazon store. I go by Mal mm-hmm. on Instagram. Yep. Where else? TikTok is also I go by Mal. Twitter, I don't really know how I feel about Twitter at the moment. So I might delete mine. I hate it. Not yeah. nothing's happening. I just don't post and yeah. it makes me so uncomfy. Yeah. Um, Maddie, plug your stuff. You can find me on Instagram at Maddie T. Wiener. Everything's at the link tree in my bio. But um I have a stand-up set out on Don't Tell Comedy. If you want to check that out, I have a mailing list for when I go on tour. Nice. Um and a whole bunch of other stuff. Maddie is insanely talented. If you're not Shucks. following them, Thanks. you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit who doesn't support. You're transphobic. You're fine. You, you I'm like are a little an, gender You are anti-Semitic. And I'm half Jewish. I'm going to grab my phone right now and follow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me get my, where's my phone? Um, and then patreon.com slash WHGS. I'm taking a break from touring over the summer to work on uh, my new show. And it supports this whole team. It supports Maddie. It supports our staff. So don't eat as little as dollar. There is a $1 option. Okay, if everyone did that, I wouldn't have to do this. Don't make me, I don't want to do this. You hate this. We both hate this. Just donate a dollar. And why am I Jerry signing, signing again? <laughs> donate a dollar. That's crazy. What's cheaper than a dollar? <laughs> That's a pretty good Seinfeld, actually. Thank you. Is Seinfeld Jewish? Yeah. Just that's now you're canceled. Right, so. <laughs> that's anti-Semitism. I am sorry. That that if Seinfeld's not Jewish, why else would he be like that? <laughs> <laughs> what else would cause that just, other than pure unbridled Judaism? <laughs> just want to learn more about the community I love so much. <laughs> just just want to learn more about the community that I, I know nothing about and love more than anything on the planet. And I do. No one has known less and loves something more mm-hmm. than I, than you feel I trust about it. Jews. I trust. Well, that's how it works community. with Jewish people. The less you, the less you know, the more you love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Man. I went to my first, um, I don't know what I, I went to my first, <laughs> A Jewish hand and a black hand. <laughs> America. Solving problems. 
<laughs> one what shake problems, at a time. <laughs> we're both, we're, what problems we're not exactly sure. <laughs> not black people not knowing who Jerry Seinfeld is and whether or not he's Jewish. That's one problem that we've solved today. White people not knowing who Mike Jones is and whether or not he's problematic. That is a problem. Or black. What, that is a problem that we've solved today. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Just a little reminder, we got that live show coming up on July 18th. Patreon.com slash WHS to support this pod. And then um, a gay thought. Listeners, I'm not sure if I've done this gay thought before, but here's one that popped into my mind about a joke that I'm writing. You know the phrase peacocking, which, you know, obviously comes from nature and peacocks, like trying to get a mate or whatever. Do you think the act of gaying yourself up to let people know that you're gay, whether that's with a little pin or maybe you wear a backwards baseball hat like me, do you think that that's gay peacocking? Because I think to a certain extent, if we didn't do it, we wouldn't. And then we get picked on a little bit for looking gay, quote unquote, whatever that means, or not looking gay. And it's like, well, you don't have to peacock and we do. So you tell me how I'm supposed to have sex without peacocking. It's it's no sex or peacocking. Those are the options. I don't know. Just a little, just a funny little one for you guys this week. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked this episode as much as I did. And thank you to all the patrons for donating, you little pieces of shit. You good little pieces of shit. <laughs>